will in this is model 7 and uh, we are going to talk about build classifier using KNN algorithm. Now okay this is an interesting problem. Now I want to find a genre of a movie okay. Now whether it is a romantic movie, action movie okay or any other type of movie. In my example set here I have just romantic and action okay and this is my problem statement here okay. This is the movie title. Let's say some movie, Beautiful Woman, right? Okay, Beautiful Woman is there. So, some movie. I mean, just think of some movie, which has the number of kicks in the movie are 18, number of kisses in the movie are 90, and I have to predict the type of movie. Okay, I have a example as well, which I'm going to run you through uh, towards the end of this class. I mean, today itself, right? I have a, a data set on, on this movie data set which I am going to run a pandas program and then show you as to, as to how we do this KNN algorithm. But as of now, you just have to tell me as to how do I predict this, okay? And what is this distance that's, that's calculated? And in KNN algorithm, right, this is also called as K nearest neighbor, okay, wherein, you know, you provide the number of case that means the number of result outputs or level that you have and based on that you predict your outcome that's KNN algorithm okay I'll be walking you through that uh, in my you know I'll be walking you through this uh, KNN algorithm in detail I mean it, I'll be walking you through the pseudo code a code as well but right now you know you'll have to tell me based on this as to how uh, this is predicted okay now let's let's go here now you see this California man, right? How was the distance from uh, to movie calculated? Now number of kicks and number of cases. Now you see this number of kicks in my question mark movie. So in this case, right, the distance from movie, this this movie here, which is in question mark, which is 18, and your number of kicks in California man is three. So the, the you know, we calculate something, some distance called as Euclidean distance, right? Now, if you calculate an Euclidean distance, which means 18 minus 3, which is 15, right? And 90 minus 104, which is 40. So, the Euclidean distance is square root of this distance, x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 and square root. So, your Euclidean distance will be something like this. Okay, your Euclidean distance would be calculated as x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 and square root. Okay, so this is your Euclidean distance. Now, in this algorithm, what we take here is 18 minus 3 which is 15 and 104 minus 90 it is okay now this is square this square and this square okay so x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square into square root so what happens in this case let's take a small uh, you know calculator and calculate it for us now now in this case, right, 18 minus 3, 15 into 15, which is equal to 225, right? And 104 minus 90 in this case, 104 minus 90 is 14. 14 into 14 should be 196. That's what I think. Let's see. Okay, 196, right? So 225 plus 196 equal to 421, right? If I take a square root of it, I get 20.5. So my distance to the movie is 20.5, right? So you understand this now as to how this distance would have been calculated, right? So after you have, and then it's similar to, uh, you know, he's not really the dude, it has a distance of 18.7, beautiful woman has a distance of 19.2, so on and so forth, right? And that's how now you will be able to predict as to what this question mark movie is. How do we do that? And I've already told you one thing, that KNN algorithm, you will be providing the key, right? That means the number of uh, 
you know results from where you want to compare whether you know you can classify whatever problem statement you have in in this example as romance or action now let's say for example i start with ks3 okay so ks3 you know what's what's the least distance from here let me take this here right in case of my this one right my least distance would be 18.7 19.2 and 20.5 so guys have you got this i mean this is the concept of knn algorithm okay it's pictorially i have explained to you what 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 this is and i'm going to quickly run through a program on this as well now see this are uh, the significance of knn algorithm knn algorithm is a type of instance based learning or lazy learning where the function is only approximated locally and all computations is deferred until classification okay after uh, you know you provide the training set everything is done and finally you know you you have this classification done it, it's in it's at the end it's uh, KNN algorithm is the simplest of all machine learning algorithm basically all you have to you know the input of it will be a data set as well as label and then you'll be able to predict it uh, as to you know what your result will be for whatever question mark data that you have so it's a k is a positive integer typically small uh, so I'll, I'll tell you for large numbers right for, for a big algorithm you can you can decide uh, you can decide k using some parameters which I'll 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 save you in KNN algorithm the output is a class membership okay and object is classified by majority votes with its neighbors. That's what I've told, right? I mean, if you have three, four, whatever, uh, you know, the output is uh, decided by voting mechanism. Now, these are the pros and cons of KNN algorithm. Pros, high accuracy, intensity, insensitive to outliers, no assumption about that. In this case, that's, there are no outliers, right? You know, uh, it, it considers everything. Now, outliers are some dots uh, outside the cluster. Okay, which I'm, which uh, when we talk about k-mean algorithm, we're we're going to talk about outliers as well. But in this case, uh, you know, there is uh, no outliers. Cons: It's computationally expensive, high memory requirement because every time uh, you know it calculates the question mark data that you have, it calculates all the input data as well. It 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 runs the training uh, data set along with it. So the memory requirement is high and then it works with uh, numeric values nominal values i mean basically values you know. now general approach to knn it's uh, first of all you collect the data you prepare the data right uh, it's uh, it's again it's uh, not just with knn it's with any other algorithm right any other algorithm it's, it's the same you collect you prepare you analyze and then you train the algorithm you know, train the algorithm. They said, let's say you have, uh, you know, a huge set of data. You know, how do you first of all cleanse the data, and then you run your program on that data so that you get correct output, right? So if you know that, uh, uh, you know, 0.5 size tumor is malignant, you know, if you pass that data, you should be able to get that that as a malignant. So that's how you are training your your whole algorithm, and then you you calculate the error rate, and you finally use it. Now how now, okay, and then there is a technique to calculate the error rate as well, you know, number of, uh, uh, total number of uh, input and total number of accurate result, that's how you get your, uh, you know, uh, error rate and you'll be able to identify as to what's the probability of your algorithm being accurate. Now, building a classifier, okay, let, let me run this for you. Now see, in, in this example, right, all I have done here is uh, I have uh, provided, to, this is training data set, okay, one, two, three, four, there are, uh, you know, this is an array that I'm passing, and for this four array that, that is being passed, these are the labels or output, okay, and uh, this is uh, the logic, whatever I've explained, okay, it, it calculates the difference matrix, and then, and then you have square of distance, and you you get the difference metric so whatever logic that I have explained you uh, using simple words for my data here that's exactly the same thing that I've done okay so and then there is finally this voting mecha mechanism so what we would do is 
I have done this once. Okay, and you see this one. Okay, this is just compiled. Now what I would do is, I am trying to classify my new data set, right? This is a new data set that I have, right? Point two and point one. Let's go back here. See, one point zero and one point one would give an output of A. 1.0, 1.0 also gives an output of A. 0.0 will give a output level of B. I mean, it's it's the data set that I have. Okay, and 0 and 0.1 has an output level of B. Now, why do you have duplicates in the label list? So that's the output, right, Rakesh? For each of the data, let's say, for example. Uh, that's a training data set, right? Let's say, for example, my 0.5 size uh, tumor is malignant, right? So 0.5 and output is malignant. 0.6 is again malignant, so that's again M. 0.7 is again malignant M. But 0.8 is not mal not malignant, so N. So you have to have, for each of the data set you provide, you also have to have an, a level or output associated with it, right, Rakesh? Okay, excellent. Now, now you see this now what I do is this is my problem statement the group and level that I have already defined this is the training data set and what's my k here 3 okay so when I do this my okay this I do not have to print this it just confuse you now the result level in this output is b right so let's take let's do a comparison of my data from here Okay, let's let me print this and do a comparison of my data here. Now you see this uh, point two and point one, right? Point two and point one, it is nearest to which one here? I mean, even otherwise, if you just have a uh, look at it, I mean, human brain. I mean, you can infer as to what this data can be, right? See, point one, it's it's near to point two and point one is near to zero rather than one. Right, so the output would be B here. Now, if if I say one point one point two and one point one, right? What should be the out data output data be here? It should be. So this is a very basic, simple example. Okay, you have the code here. You you have the code here. Just run through it, and uh, you know, this is a very small, basic example that has been created so as to give you guys an example, right? Just go through this once, and you'll be able to understand. Whatever explanation that I have done, it's exactly the same thing that has been done here, and uh, we are just building a simple classifier. Now, now the distance calculation might not necessarily be Euclidean. You can have other type of distance calculation. You know, you can implement some other type of logic even in KNN. Right? That depends, and uh, and with machine learning, right? There's no one right answer. Okay, and you get a correct answer after repetitive, uh, uh, you know, trial and error method. There is there is no way you can just go ahead and and uh, you know be able to find out this is my algorithm, this is the data, and uh, this is the output that I should get. That that's there is no such method here. You know, there's no hard and fast rule. It's all trial and error. You'll have to keep on applying different types of algorithm until you finally get the correct result. Now, building a classifier. Okay, you can just uh, have a look at the code at this code code later as well. You know, my my bigger concern is to explain you as to how this happens. And basically, code is something you'll, which you'll be able to write. Now, now this is how you build a classifier for every point in our data set, right? Calculate the distance between x and current point, which you, which I've already explained actually with that example. So you, you should be good, good with this. And sort the distance in increasing order, right? Finally, you sort this distance in uh, increasing order. Take k with k item with lowest distance in x. Find the majority class amongst this item which is nothing but voting and return the mystery classes of prediction so this is what this is written in words here i just explain using an example okay so
Okay. Now this is how you you can run. This is I I have run this. You have seen as to how how you get an output. Now testing a classifier. Okay. Classifiers are not always correct. That's why we have different types of classifiers. There are different things that impact the performance of classifiers, such as setting settings of the classifier and the data set. Right. If you have a huge data set. Okay, if you have a huge data set, obviously you take more memory, right? Uh, if you are executing a big data set, because at any point in time you are not just uh, at any point in time you are not just passing the training data set, but you are passing the problem statement as well. So obviously it will be memory intensive. Different algorithms perform differently on different data sets. Okay, if it is um, you know it's string, it's different. If it is numeric, it's different. So on and so forth. But uh, basically, we do classifier for your numerical and, and nominal values, which which should be uh, you know which which should be numbers basically. Now, and if and even if it is not, you have to devise a way in order to you know you in order to find out. Let's say malignant is one and uh, non-malignant is zero. That's that's how you assign values. Now, error rate. Test the classifier with known result. This is what I said. This is R is number of wrong guesses by total number of tests, right? This, this, this is the error rate. Error rate of zero is perfect classifier, and error rate of one is classifier is always wrong. So that's this is how you look into it. Now, so that was about KNN algorithm. 